I'm Dr. Thuravangadam from the University of Pennsylvania and I'm going to talk about our study, Rectal Endomedicine Reduces Pancreatitis in both high and low risk patients undergoing ERCP to be published in the journal later this month. Rectal, rectal endomedicine was shown to have significant benefit in the landmark study by Almanzer and colleagues done in June of 2012. It was shown to significantly reduce the rate of pancreatitis and moderate to severe pancreatitis in high-risk patients, mainly with sphincter of OD dysfunction, undergoing ERCP. Following the study, our center, like many others, started routinely administering endomedicine following ERCP. However, the majority of patients undergoing ERCP tend to be low to average risk and were not representative of this high-risk cohort. Given this, endomedicine has not been shown to be beneficial in this population. Thus, we conducted a real-world case series retrospective cohort study looking at rectal endomedicine and its benefit in reducing pancreatitis and moderate to severe pancreatitis. From January 1, 2009 to December 31, 2015, we looked at 4,017 patients undergoing ERCP. From January 1, 2009 to June 1, 2012, no one received endomedicine. Following this, with a few exceptions, patients received endomedicine. Our primary outcome was the development of post ERCP pancreatitis by the cotton consensus criteria. And the secondary outcome was the development of moderate to severe pancreatitis by the same criteria. A multivariable logistic regression was used to analyze the data to adjust for potential confounders. A secondary propensity match analysis was performed to adjust for potential differences in who received endomedicine versus those who did not. Of the 4,017 patients, 2007 received endomedicine compared to 2010 who did not. 1.99% of patients who received endomedicine developed pancreatitis compared to 4.73% of unexposed patients. Endomedicine significantly reduced the rates of pancreatitis by almost 65% with an odds ratio of 0.35. It also significantly re reduced the rates of moderate to severe pancreatitis with an odds ratio of 0.17, a reduction of in moderate to severe pancreatitis of 83%. The number needed to treat to, re to prevent one case of pancreatitis was 34, and the number needed to treat to pre prevent one case of moderate to severe pancreatitis was 45 for endomedicine. Both were definitely significant. Looking at an important subgroup, we looked at patients with malignant biliary obstruction. We found an interesting finding of a higher rate in the unexposed cohort than previously thought. 5.87% of these patients developed pancreatitis, which is higher than the low risk they're presumed to have. In this subgroup, endomedicine significantly reduced pancreatitis by almost 64% with an odds ratio of 0.36, as well as moderate to severe pancreatitis with an odds ratio of 0.20. The number needed to treat to prevent one case of PEP in patients with malignant obstruction was 23, and the number needed to treat to prevent one case of moderate to severe pancreatitis was 35. We looked at who benefited the most, and it seems that pa patients with pancreatic endocarcinoma were the highest risk and had the most benefit. The unexposed cohort of these patients developed pancreatitis at almost 7.5% compared to just 2.3% for endomedicine, a significant risk reduction. We also demonstrated in other significant subgroups, high-risk patients, patients with PSC, patients with gallstones, bile-leak, as well as a trend to benefit in post-liver transplant patients. In summary, our study demonstrated that in both low and high-risk patients, endomedicine significantly reduced the risk of both pancreatitis and moderate to severe pancreatitis. Interestingly, in the subgroup of patients with malignant biliary obstruction, they had a much higher rate of pancreatitis than previously thought. However, endomedicine significantly attenuated this risk. Also, we demonstrated important reduction in significant other subgroups, including high-risk patients and the other subgroups I described. Our study, however, had, had potential limitations given in retrospective cohort design. We potentially could have had other confounders we were unable to adjust for. However, we, tried, we performed a propensity match analysis to adjust for differences in who may have received endomedicine versus those who did not. This confirmed the primary model. Another potential downside is that our study was performed in a tertiary academic medical care center where the majority of endoscopists were experienced endoscopists. This could have limited procedural variability and could limit the validity of our study when applied to other populations. In conclusion, our study demonstrated three important findings. First, in all patients, both low and high-risk patients, endomedicine significantly reduces the risk of both pancreatitis and moderate to severe pancreatitis. In patients with malignant biliary obstruction, 
we showed that the rate of pancreatitis was higher than previously described, but indomethacin reduced the rates of pancreatitis and moderate to severe pancreatitis in this subgroup. Finally, our study suggests that indomethacin should be routinely used following ERCP, and prospective studies involving rectal endomethacin should be undertaken in both low and high-risk patients. Thank you.